guys welcome back to my channel welcome back to another episode review of insecure and this is season four episode four last week i wanted this episode to be last week's episode so bad <laughs> so let's get to it so this episode is called low-key losing it this is one month before the block party y'all look at my makeup comment down below if you like my makeup Okay, so this episode starts off with Issa making like this Facebook post. It looked like a Facebook post to her site and she drops, you know, that schoolboy Q is going to be headlining the whole block party. Immediately, she gets a comment back like, hey, schoolboy Q, I'm in that thing. Like, I'm not passing it up. In my spirit, I don't know, like, when that, like, since it was so immediate, in my spirit, I was like, something gonna happen something gonna happen with schoolboy q but hold off on that so then <laughs> as she's making this post and she's looking at the comment she gets like a knock on the door but it's like a continuous knock like we got an issue knock like you need to open right now knock and it's like all of the residents <laughs> that live in her apartment complex mad because the water went off and Issa just it went right over Issa head she been trying to get this block party stuff together and the people is without water okay then the old man is like you got us like we Flint Michigan out of here I need a 24 hour notice when something's gonna be off so then it jumps to Molly sitting down doing some work she got these three rollers in the front of her head if you ain't never did that click off this video right now now I'm just letting the duck lick off. Um, but then when she takes them out, it wasn't no little bump. It, it wasn't nothing. So I'm like, she must have just put them rollers in. And then she hit this number, checking her armpits, and was like, ugh. Sis, pro sis been working. She ain't took no bath. She ain't had no time for no whole bath. She just, you know, letting time get away. So, of course, it's Andrew who is at the door. And, you know, he comes in. And um, they try to get busy, you know, go to, and he could tell that Molly wasn't into it because she's worried about work. So, you know, he's trying to be understanding. So he says, you know, I'll be here. Go ahead. This girl goes back to go back to work, looks at the phone and it's 142 in the morning. So, of course, we all know Andrew is knocked out. She go crawls in the bed with Andrew talking about, are you ready? And he turns over and smiles and like, yeah. First of all, at one forty two in the morning, like on a normal day, like if I got to work, your girl is asleep. I'm not waking up. Like, first of all, I'm not waking up with a smile on my face either. Like, it's 2 o'clock in the morning and I have to be up. So Issa skips to the next scene. Issa gets a call about her fireproofs and she's acting like she has an assistant so she's like oh please hold and then gets back on the phone and of course it's her and she's like oh i need to get on to sapphire like she's just a mess she's not doing her job so after she gets off the phone with this guy you know she opens up her text messages and it's condola but she, condola is not responding to any of Issa's text and message Baby, Issa didn't message her Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Like, Issa not get her. So, Issa really did message her Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Straight no response. And then, I guess she did respond, like, call you back after work. So, this is where I have a problem with Condola. Because, boo. Now you messing with my name and you messing with my coin because you supposed to be helping me. Whatever else you got going on, you got going on. And see, this is where the irony comes in. Of course, me and I go to whatever. This is where that irony comes in because we know her and Lawrence got into it. You used to don't know her and Lawrence got into it. But my thing is, business comes first. It was all cool and gravy when you and Lawrence was okay. So I'm going to need you to get it together. Because, baby, when my name is on the line and I'm putting these coins down, you're going to get it together. 
period like i already knew condola was gonna piss me off like ugh. so i just went on a whole rant but i don't like females like that so then you know Issa calls her and it literally goes straight to voicemail so then it jumps back to molly working with some of her co-workers and they're just he he hi hi and i only put this in here because one of her co-workers was like yeah don't ever marry a teacher because how can they be so angry and have summers off y'all know i couldn't leave that out like if you know i'm an educator baby we we earn them summers the first week of school we earn them summers the week before we even get back to school don't do that i have I, that annoys me like when people are like y'all have summers off okay we don't get paid for them Baby, I only get paid for them, what, 189 days, 190 days? Then I go to work. So, summer's Christmas break, all that. Your girl is just spreading her money out, okay? That is such a misconception that I hate. Like, I hate, like, moving on. Moving the fuck on. So, then, Issa and Molly are pulling up to Tiffany's house. And... <laughs> say Issa got to the parking spot first but then Molly comes up behind her and tries to cut her car into the parking spot so you know Issa's like oh girl I'm gonna move on and still tries to get it so they having a whole parking parking wars which was hilarious so Molly um takes the spot Issa was like oh I'll go circle around and see if I can find something and if you ever been in LA like and you've driven in LA, like it's so hard getting parking. Like it's so hard. Like you gonna park around the block somewhere. So as Issa's walking it back, she gets a she well when she was in the car, um, having this whole parking war with Molly, her phone rings, but she ignores it because you know she's trying to get this parking spot. So as she's walking up to the house. She checks the voicemail and it's Nathan. Like, hey, I talked to Andrew about the block party. Let me come through. And you know, we ain't heard, we ain't seen or heard from Nathan. So we're gonna see where they're gonna take us with that. So then her and Molly have this again awkward ass conversation. Um, just kind of about this about their self-care um Sundays that they were having. They haven't had them in a few weeks and they were like yeah you know maybe when all this kind of calms down we can find another day that works for both of us and again it's just awkward between those two because again what lack of communication tiffany had the baby i was wondering how long they was gonna take i was wondering how long she was gonna be pregnant for this season so okay about halfway through the season but she has the baby, oh my God, and um, I can never remember that guy's name. Derek and Lawrence are in there with the baby. She's so freaking cute. Derek is reminiscing about all the times like he's trashed females or all the things he's done to females. And now he's realizing that guys are going to be doing this to his daughter. And it, it hits him. So any men, comment down below. Like I feel like that's a... A big thing like why guys don't want to have daughters is because they know all of the effed up crap they've done in their life and what they've done to women and now it's gonna happen to your daughter karma baby karma karma is a bitch. tiffany isa kelly and molly are sitting there talking and tiffany is just talking about how birth was not what it was all cracked like what people say is this beautiful thing like she was like no and then she also mentions that she kept telling the doctors that she didn't feel well and she knew something was wrong with her and they ignored her and she did have a blood clot and i applaud Issa for sticking that in here because black women die at a faster rate during childbirth because when there's a cry for help or there's a cry for pain it is more likely to be ignored so my black brothers and my black sisters can we get y'all to become doctors we need y'all you know we need our black nurses we need our midwives we need our doulas we need all of that because who gonna protect us like us 
as long as you're not like that, like them black people that, <laughs> like that black dude from, uh, what's that movie? As long as you're not the dude from Queen and Slim and you're going to send us down the path of getting called, you're going to kill us yourself. Like, we don't want black people like that. We want black people that's going to rise up, honey. Community. Let's build our own community again. Like, Black Wall Street was a thing. Anyway, so yeah, I did like that Issa did incorporate um, that because it is a big deal. We hear all the time of black women almost dying during childbirth because their pain is ignored and it's just not right. And like I noticed during this time, every time Molly, I mean, every time Issa says something, Molly got something slick to say like, I'm sick of her. Like, I'm going to slap the shit out of her. Like, she's hit that moment, like, she's exhausting. And every episode, we can see why her and Issa are not friends. Like, we can see it. I'm sick of her shit. So then, Issa's talking to Tiffany. No, Issa's talking to Kelly about molly and asking her like has anything been different like has molly said anything to you and then here comes a lawrence lawrence is there and it did i, I don't remember comment down below because i don't remember her him saying like come outside or did he i know she was getting ready to go outside i don't know maybe i missed that part but they ended up outside and molly went upstairs to help tiffany with the baby Molly looking at the window, rolling her eyes. Baby, you're supposed to be up there with the baby. But you're too busy worried about what Issa doing. You don't know what the conversation is about. And you jump into conclusions. You could jump out the window, honestly. Like, because that's how I feel about you right now. Like, she, you could tell she's just judging Issa, like, without knowing 100% of what's going on. So then, um... Molly gets a text about from Andrew about their date later. And she basically says, like, she can't go because she's on baby duty. And then she has to do work stuff. And he sends the thumbs up. <laughs> Baby, you better pay attention to your man before somebody else pay attention to your man. Okay, sweetheart? Okay, sweetheart? I feel like Molly is going to mess up with Andrew. Even though she don't want to mess up with Andrew. Like, I don't know why, like, <laughs> I just, like, I, I feel like her and Andrew are good. I don't want her to mess up her good thing. Like, this is what you've been wanting. So, act right. Because he only going to be patient for so long. And if the roles were reversed, like, if a guy kept blowing you off, yeah, you have work, um, but you have... I am a firm believer in you make time for the things that you want, period. You have to just, I don't know. Moving on, because, you know, me and Molly ain't here right now, so. So, Molly asked Tiffany, has um, Issa talked to her about anything, um, and Issa, or Issa, you know, mentioned anything about her, about Molly not being happy. And, you know, Tiffany's like, no, like, she hasn't. Um, and Mo Molly's just upset. Like, you know, she always claims that I don't want to be happy, but it looks like she's on her old shit, too. And Tiffany is basically like, you know, that's complicated. You don't even really know. Basically, like, you, you jump into conclusions. And then Tiffany, I don't really like Tiffany like that, but she does say something. That y'all have a communication breakdown, and y'all probably both feel the same way, and they do. So it jumps back to Lawrence and Issa outside having their awkward conversations that they always have, but you know it works for them because that's just who they are. And he, you know, Issa mentions that, you know, Condola has been ignoring her, like she hasn't gotten, been able to get in contact with her, and he was about to tell her, I guess, what is going on, and Issa gets a call. So she takes the call, 
And it's basically probably like the team of school, the like people that back Schoolboy Q and basically telling her that he's pulling out of the block party. And of course, like, like in my head, I'm like, did Condola have something to do with this? What y'all think? Comment down below if you think Condola has something to do with this. And then so when she goes back to talk to Lawrence, you know, she's like, oh, well, what's up? And he kind of, he doesn't talk about it, which I'm okay with because it's like, do you talk about it and add fuel to the fire <clears throat> or do you wait till she kind of calms down from that? And, you know, Issa has already put out the flyers and everything. Like people are coming, you know, to see Schoolboy Q. So it's kind of like, what the hell am I going to do? So she's sitting in her bed and <laughs> scrolling through her Instagram and Beyonce, so she gets to ready to tie Beyonce like, hey sis, like, I screamed so loud because it's like, that's ambitious, but I don't think Beyonce be checking them DMs. But then she deletes it and there's her going through all of these different contacts, trying to find somebody else to replace Schoolboy Q. Molly and Andrew finally had their day night. This whole back and forth between them two, I'm sick of it. Um... She's upset now because she wants to do all these things that night, but then he's want to go hang out with his friends. Blase, blah, blah, blah. So Issa calls Molly. Um, Molly is sitting at work. And, you know, Molly, you know, thinking she calling to just talk. Um, but my, um, Issa is calling because she did see one of the artists is, I guess, with Live Nation. And she knows that Andrew works for Live Nation. So she calls Molly like, hey, what's up? Like, do you think that Andrew can help me out in getting this artist for me? And Molly's like, uh, I'll see what I can do. Uh -huh. oh, so over Molly. So, as, as Issa is asking for her help, she's like, well, have you been paying him on time? Have you been doing this? Have you been doing that? Bitch, if you don't help me as my best friend, like, you act like I'm asking you to have sex with the dude. Like, she got to go. Got to go. Like, comment down below. If you called your best friend for a favor that isn't going to harm her, why are you questioning me like that? Like, don't question me like that. Like, those are, like, asinine questions. Like, oh, have you been paying him? Like, why everything got to be so smart-ass? Like, ugh. So Molly calls Issa. Issa, you know, walks through the door. And Issa like, girl, dang, you work fast. And Molly is in the restroom like, oh, I didn't ask. And I really don't plan on asking. Because I really like him. And I don't want to, um, what's she say? She was like, she's protecting her relationship. I don't think that has anything to do with no relationship. Like, Issa didn't ask you to do something crazy or ask Andrew to do something crazy. Are you afraid that Issa is about to have her season and you don't want her to do better than you? Like, that's all I'm getting from episode one, two, three, four. Like, Molly is really not trying to be there for Issa in her season like that's like if like my best friend like if when it's her season it's her season and guess who's gonna be her biggest cheerleader I am because she's my biggest cheerleader like every season is not your season Molly and I'm gonna need you to have several scenes like she making my my heart beating fast because I do not like people like that. Like everything is all good when 
you know, your blessings is coming and your life is great and all this, that, and the other. But when you're a friend and it's their time to shine, you're not there to support them. Girl, go on. And at the end, um, <laughs> you know, Issa goes back in her inner, you know, how she talks, she talks to her inner self. And she's like, I don't want to talk. I just want to take a shower. Girl, she turns on that water and all that brown water started pouring out. And then she just stands there. Because, baby, who can do that? Baby. But then it goes back to them throwing that whole Flint, Michigan thing in there. That's why I do, I love um, the writing of this. I think Issa does an amazing job uh, with this show. Because she does put those things in there to make you think. Like, these people have been dealing with this for years. What has been done about it? Nothing. So, again, this was an okay episode. Me being mad at Molly, of course. Um, thank you for watching. Comment down below. Go ahead and share. Stay tuned because I, I'm about to record my review of Married to Medicine Los Angeles Season 2, Episode 1. So make sure you come back for the video.